video so you can see the video counting down on the top right. And that helps me. All right, well, good morning. Happy Mother's Day to all of you and all of you in person and watching online. We want to say so glad you're here this morning as we celebrate uh, mothers. I know my mom is online and watching, and, and then we have new moms, moms-to-be that are watching, mom, pe people that wish they were moms. And so this is a, a special day as we celebrate moms, and we just want to say thank you for joining us, being a part of what we're doing this morning. And um, if you're new, if it's a new thing, uh, we just, first of all, if you're watching, please go and share and start a watch party so that people, other people can watch. And then the other thing you can do, if you're new, you can, uh, you can text the word welcome to 432-223-0505. And when you do that, we'll uh, put you in a loop of information about our church. So that's 432-223-0505. Uh, and that will be begin uh, that process of text the word welcome and we'll put you into the to the screen and contact you with more information about First Baptist Church of Seminole. Um, again, uh, one of the things we want to remind you of is that this is on version. You can pull that up on your Bible app, uh, pull up the notes for this morning's sermon and be a part of that as well. So join us in that way or open up the pages of your scripture and do that as well. Uh, together. So we are glad you're here. This is the question I want to start off with this morning. So those of you who are watching, uh, this is the question. Uh, what new practice that you've started or re-emphasized during um, COVID-19 that you want to keep after uh, we get out of this uh, cor corona fatigue? So what new practice? You think about that. What new practice uh, do you want to keep? And there's, I know there's some you want to move away from, but then there's some things, maybe some new activities that you'd want to do. Let's stand together, uh, read the scripture together. Y'all go ahead. We're going to read Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. Should be there in your notes on version, or if you have your Bibles or on the screen, just say this with us. We're in this uh, series called Mood Swingers, uh, and this has been the text that we've been uh, riffing off of. Uh, and looking at together. So it says this, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Have a seat. Well, this is Mother's Day, and we are thankful. We're so thankful for 
uh, for those ladies in our life, uh, and it's uh, just the blessing that you are to your families. And so we want to celebrate you today. We want to watch a video. Uh, th- this video is called "A Mom Needs a Quarantine." Let's watch this real quick. Mother's Day looks a lot different this year. (sighs) Mommy needs a quarantine. And our moms may be spending a lot of time with their kids right now. A lot. Like, so, so much time. And even though they love their kids to the moon and back. Mommy, where are you going? Sometimes moms need a little alone time. Mommy! You know, to recharge. Go talk to daddy. Mommy! Where are you? Mommy, No matter what's happening in the world, their favorite way to spend time is with their family. In good times, in hard times. Mom! Hi. You're breaking everything! In uncertain times. Thank you, Mom, for making time for us every single day. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. I ask that you would watch over us as we go to bed and rest, that you would speak to us in Bible stories and speak to us in... uh... Amen. Isn't that good? I think I, I think I heard through some of the moms online. I don't know how that happened, but they said amen to a lot of those things as they were seeing that. Uh, it's a good day. Amen. It is a good day. And so, moms, we want to honor you today. Um, at Either at 2.30, if you're watching online, come up to the church at 2.30. We'll be having our drive through ice cream. We've done that a few times before. But today, for mothers, we're giving you a gift. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Um, but we have a gift for you. Come at 2.30. Now, you folks that are in here with us this morning, uh, we will have a, a special guest delivery person that will be giving you your gifts on your way out today, okay? Um, and... Uh, so, the, yeah, so come up at 2.30. Uh, we have our, our Mother's Day giveaway. We just want to say we love you, and we thank you for how you minister to your families and how you love others and how um, you are uh, the biblical example of what women and mothers should be. So 2.30 today, come up and get your ice cream and get your gift from us. Um, and that's really, I mean, if you know some other ladies that aren't plugged into our church, tell them about it, or while you're here, you could get one, get a gift and take it to them because uh, we want to love on our community. All right. Along with that, uh, we have our senior Bibles are here. Uh, they, are, they are in the fellowship hall, and uh, they are ready to be for you to come and sign. So uh, if you could, during, the, during business hours this week, and uh, if you could come up and sign those Bibles or highlight passages, write notes to the seniors in there. Uh, we had a crew, Donna Johnson and her crew, uh, worked so hard on these Bibles, getting them, uh, journaling in them, and, and getting them ready for, for where it is now. And so we need your help to come up. So come up during business hours this week. If you need to come up later, uh, let the church know, and we'll make arrangements. We'll come and let you in. We'll, we'll do that. It's super safe. Uh, Bibles are spread out all over the fellowship hall. We have hand sanitizer. Um, yeah, and we'll, so we'll make sure we're, we're super safe about that. But we want you to come up and highlight Bibles for seniors, if you would, uh, so we can honor them. We know that this year is kind of different for our seniors, isn't it? This is a different way to graduate than we've ever seen before. So uh, we want to honor them and love on them. So that's what's going on this week, if you could come up and do that. Uh, now, online giving. So there, there are ways, if you're in the building today, how you can give if you brought an offering today. You can put it in the generous bucket right up here or at the back of the worship center on your way out. Uh, you can also give online. Uh, you can go to our church website at fbcseminal.org. Uh, there is a Give tab on there that will take you to our giving portal. Uh, or you can also text the word FBC Give, FBC Give to the number seven three two five six. 
and that'll take you to that same page. You can, you can assign that to go to generous buckets to help those in our community or however you want to do that. So uh, several ways that you can give to help ministry go uh, here at church. Amen. Are you glad to be here today? All right. Well, let's, let's, if you want to stand and sing, uh, that's awesome. You do that. If you want to sit and sing, that's fine too. Uh, we're just, we're glad that we can be here to worship together. Thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me, save that Thou art. Thou my best on, by day or by night, waking or sleeping, Thy presence my. Be thou my wisdom. Be thou my wisdom and thou my true word. I ever with thee and thou with me, Lord. Thou my great father and I thy true son. Thou in me dwelling and I with thee. Riches, riches I heed not, nor man's empty praise. Thou mine inheritance, thou went always. Thou and thou only, but first in my heart. I, King of heaven, my treasure thou heaven I king of heaven my victories won may I reach heaven's joys over right and side heart of my own heart whatever befall still be my vision oh ruler of all heart of my own heart tell you about a, just a few other things, and then we'll keep with worship this morning. Uh, we are starting up DNA in May, and if you haven't signed up for one of those classes, you need to do that super quick, because we need to know that if you want to, if you need to get a book and all that kind of thing. Uh, so DNA classes, if you don't know, those are our, our smaller groups uh, that we offer during the year usually, but we're doing it in May this year, uh, and those will be all online, either through, through Zoom, I think, is what they're all taking place through Zoom meetings. But there are books involved, so there are videos involved. You might watch a video beforehand and then get involved in a discussion. Uh, so we have three classes that you can take. Uh, there's a financial peace class that Joey and Daisy Aguilar are teaching. Uh, if you've never taken part in that, it's a great program. Man, it's helped so many people. Uh, there is also a class called Finding God Faithful, and that is taught by Katie Erickson. That's for the ladies. Um, you can go online and register for that, and that way you can get in touch with the videos or whatever you need for that. And then there, uh, there's the Life of a Jesus Follower, which is taught by Luis Garcia. And that one starts actually this Tuesday. We're kicking it off, and that's for the men. And so we want you to be a part of that. There, uh, I know that there are videos that are connected to this that we need to get you links for. Uh, there are ebooks and and different things like that that you're going to need. So uh, be sure and go and sign up for those classes, and we want you to be a part. And now if you're doing, uh, Joe, are we still the financial piece? Can they still register for that? Okay, uh, so financial peace, you can still get involved in that. If you take that class, if you go online and register and take that class, it's over $100, like well over $100. Through our church, we're doing it for 45 right? 40, sorry, $49 uh, if you do it through the church. That's huge, and so we want you to be a part of that. We want to be able to help folks that need help. So uh, register for those three things, and let's get involved in DNA. It's a good way to connect with others. 
All right, let's continue to worship this morning. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin Lost without hope but no place to begin your love made a way to let mercy come in When death was arrested and my life began Ash was redeemed, only beauty remains My orphan heart was given a name My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance when death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace. Oh, your grace so free washes over me. You have made me new. Now life begins with you. It's your endless love pouring. Chains. I'm a prisoner no more. My shame was a ransom he faithfully bore. He canceled my debt and he called me his friend. When death was arrested and my life began, oh, your grace, oh, your grace, so free, washes over. It's your endless love pouring down on us. You have made this new now life begins with you. Our Savior displayed on a criminal's cross. Darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost. But then Jesus arose with our freedom in hand. That's when death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes over me. You have made me new now. Life begins with you. It's your endless love pouring down on night. You have made us new, now life begins with you. We're free. Oh, we're free, free, forever we're free. Come join the song of all the redeemed. We're free. the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, I'm a glory. Hallelujah, I'm a Hallelujah, I'm a glory. Revive us again. 
again. We praise Thee. We praise Thee, O God, for Thy Spirit of light, who has shown us our Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah, Thy the glory. Last verse, revive us again, fill each heart with thy love. Revive us again, fill each heart with thy love. May each soul be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thy the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thy the glory. Revive. Again. Sing that chorus one more time. Oh, hallelujah, by the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, by the glory. Revive us again. Amen. voice in the dark, sing as a new one, sing as though you were in love, lift your eyes, see the King, standing on now and see, and all of my hopes, and all of my fears, and all of my wants and all of my years and everything now and everything then all my life I resolve you're worthy of it all you're worthy of it all you're worthy of it all up my voice in the dark. I sing as a new one. I sing because I am in love. Lift your eyes, see the key. Standing on now and sing. And all of my hopes, and all of my fears, and all of my wants, and all of Everything in all my life I resolve. You're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. Jesus. 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 The Word became flesh. True God of true God's begotten, not made he obeyed unto death. And Jesus, Jesus, the Lamb that was slain. Then on the third he stepped out of the grave, loosed the chains of my sin.
fears and all of my wants and all of my years and everything now and everything then all my life I resolve you're worthy of it all you're worthy of it all you're worthy of it all Father, this morning we just come and we thank you, Lord. We thank you for a place of worship. We thank you, God, for those who are watching at home, the body of Christ, watching together, serving together, worshiping together, Lord. We thank you uh, for each family that's represented in, in this room, but also online and those who are attending and uh, joining in worship today, Father. We thank you for Mother's Day, Lord, and, and what that means to us, how special that is. And we pray, God, that that each, each mother or grandmother or great-grandmother, uh, that they would be honored today, Father. And we thank you especially for the new mothers in our congregation and, and how this day is, is super special to them. And uh, we just uh, pray that you lift them up, God, that, uh, that you would put someone in their path that could love them and honor them and, and uh, just make them feel worthy, God. And in the same breath, Lord, that's our prayer, is that our worship that the things that we say or do and things that we sing would be, would be worthy of your name. For you are worthy. Lord, I love that chorus we just sang. It's so profound and, and so simple. All of my hopes, all of my fears, all of my wants, and all of my years. Everything now and everything then, all my life, I or we resolve. God, that you're worthy of it all. You're worthy of all that we could give you, Lord Jesus. So that's our prayer today, that we would lay things down, turn things over, God, that, that you would remove distractions from our lives, from our hearts, things that would get in the way, God, of pleasing you. So as we turn the pages of your word this morning, Father, we pray that you are honored above all, that you are glorified above all, for you're worthy of it all. So would you speak, God, through your word, speak through your servant. Give him boldness, Father. Holy Spirit, move in this place. Move online, God. Move uh, through Facebook and through uh, YouTube and through our phone streaming. God, we pray that you, your Holy Spirit would just reach the community that we're in and God, our state and nation and all over the world, God, that your gospel would be proclaimed. We give you praise for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. All, all right, so thank you for joining. I, I don't know about you, but my heart is experiencing what I would call corona fatigue. I am tired of it. Anyone? Can I get a witness? Can I get an amen? I, I, I like speed and efficiency, and it's not happening. I did finally get a haircut. Yes. Uh, I don't know if any of y'all have seen Corona Lisa instead of Mona Lisa. There's a picture. Uh, she's got a little gray spot in her hair. Uh, there's a picture on your YouTube, and hopefully they'll put it up on well. Is, but, uh, but this is what's happening, and I know you're experiencing fatigue. One of the things, we're just ready to be back at church, and what we're doing is just working through our strategy, and our strategy, part of that is attending worship service, but the other part is connecting in groups, and we're doing that in backyards. We're going to be doing that for a while, um, and because just because of all the logistics to be put into place to make it a, 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 a great experience, and so, uh, so we won't have to have seven services, and so uh, if you're in a group somewhere, let me just say to you, take a picture, put it on uh, Facebook so people can see that people are worshiping and really what you do is you connect in two of our strategies by going to backyard you you go to a small group you go to a connect group and you also attend a worship service because you're doing that together uh, and the other part of our strategy is partnering on a team and help meeting a need and you've been doing that but I am experiencing corona fatigue I don't know let me let you into a little bit of my personality my personality uh, do y'all remember when we used to get on airplanes uh, I don't know how y'all deplane from an airplane, but I am one of those guys that probably perturb you and disturb you because when the plane arrives at the gate to deplane, 
I always cheat. I unbuckle before the indicator dings. I, I get an aisle seat so that when it's time, whether I'm at the back or the front or the middle, that when I'm the person who jumps up, bends my head under the overhead bin, stands in the aisle, grabs my carry-on, and then I go, move people, move. And you know what happens, things slow way down, way down. And I've learned unloading a cabin, or it used to anyway, takes time. Most stuff rarely happens as fast as we hope it does. And psychologically, that's where we are. We're stuck in the aisle, hoping the line will move on so that we can get out of this COVID-19 flight and get on with our lives. And emotionally, there's dissonance and distance as we attempt to process in the midst of uncertainty. And this uncertainty creates uh, instability in our life and the uncertainty overwhelms that internal instability. And the result often is anxiety and worry. And if you're not careful, the holding pattern will make you a hostage. You'll find yourself in places and spaces as your finances falter and your business is on pause and your emotions unravel and your patience run thin and your hope dissipates. You will, you will have tension. And, and that video showed that no one faces this tension in this season more than moms. They are hardwired to cope and to hope. But if they were being honest with you and, and just straightforward, some of them have had their kids home way too long. They're ready for them to go. It's, it was good for a season. They're ready for school to start back. They're ready to get back in the swing of things. And it's hard to verbalize. But remember what we said last week. God brought you to this moment. So you can remember what he taught you in this moment. And God never abdicates or forgets you. He never, never is going to leave you or forsake you. He is not rejecting you. He is redirecting you to something new. And the process is the plan. The uncertainty, we're not going to have certainty. We're going to have uncertainty. But God never promises certainty. What he promises us is if we'll cling to our creator and listen to him, that he will bring with faith a greater future. But a greater future does not happen without an abiding faith. There's some new things happening because of this season. And one of the verses I'm holding on to in this and it's Isaiah 43, 19. It says this, Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. There are new things happening. And it's not rejection by God, but redirection by God. As you perceive it, the thing, new things are, are springing forth. And so don't waste the quarantine. And, and the passage that we read last week, let me read it again. 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5, beginning verse 6, there are four key words in this passage. Remember those? I don't know if you remember. Last week we talked about humility. Today we're going to talk about adversary, the word anxiety, the word prosperity. And then we said there are four key lies, four false phrases that one of them we looked at last week that prove yourself. The one we look at this morning that the enemy tells you is that I'm not real, I'm a fantasy, you don't need to worry about me. The one we'll look at next week, you'll never make it through this. And the one we look at the week after is you've arrived. As we talk to our graduates. But the first lie that we looked at last week of the enemy, the adversary, is you have to prove this. You have to prove yourself. And, and there's no demographic more prone to that, that, that falsehood than moms. You look at social media and the poses and the societal pressures and the internal drives and the parental needs and the marital conflict and the vocational demands and the financial crisis and emotional limits all feed the need if we're not careful as moms to pose and perform uh, and, and to put ourselves in a position that we have to prove ourselves. And remember we said last week humility is not proving yourself it's already been proven. It's feeding into the dependency on our creator putting ourselves under the mighty hand of God and he in due season will lift us up when it is time. And so humility isn't proving yourself it's knowing uh, not proving who you are, it's knowing whose you are. It's dependency on an identity that's already given to you. And so he says that here. It's the security of knowing your identity instead of creating an identity. So Peter begins with humility, verse 6. He begins with humility, then he segues into anxiety, which we'll talk about next week. And then 
In the midst of that, he introduces our adversary. Remember the passage, verse 6, humble yourselves, therefore, come on, under the mighty hand of God. So at the proper time, he may exalt you, casting some of your anxiety. Is that what it says? Casting a part of your anxiety. Casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. And that's a lie that he'll attack, that God doesn't care for you. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you've suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, establish you. To him be the dominion forever and forever. Amen. Now, do you see how this segues together? That... Satan, the adversary, the enemy who wants to take away your absolute confidence rooted in your dependency and your security and your identity and the creator and God's mighty hand. So God will exalt you at the proper time. When does anxiety come? Anxiety de descends when we begin thinking about the what ifs of our dependency. What if God doesn't take care of me? What if God doesn't keep, keep, keep his promises? Can I trust his word? Do I believe his promises? Do I, do I have enough faith? And then that uncertainty and dependency pivots to undermine your identity. I'm, I'm nobody. I'm unlovable. I, I ne I'm never going to make it. I'm a failure. My life has no meaning. I, I'm not important. It's always my fault. I'm useless. And here's where the adversary pounces. And what does it say? He pounces on our dependency. He pounces on our identity. And it says in the passage that our adversary, he is our adversary, he is our enemy, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. So he is our adversary. Now, sometimes he's a roaring lion, but other times... He's a silent plague. Uh, he, he is deceptive. The, John, John tells us, I think it's John 8, 44, tells us that his native tongue is not Polish or English. His native tongue is lying. He is, he is lying. And he uses that to say, look, I'm a film buff. I like movies, but I don't like predictable movies. I like movies that have plot twist and you don't see it coming. I don't remember if y'all remember M. Night Shalahan's The Sixth Sense where he sees dead people. That, that caught me by surprise. Or perhaps the most famous one when in The Empire Strikes Back when Darth Vader and uh, the Sith Lord tells Luke Skywalker, the Jedi Knight, no, I am your father. See, and, and, and here, here's something for you. What do you get? This is just a pastor joke. What do you get when Darth Vader marries Ella Fitzgerald. Ella Vader. There you go. So there you go. Come on. Come on. We got to have a little humor. Yeah. Thank you. So, so Satan is the master of disguise who orchestrates plot twists to feed the fuel of your emotional disarray. He will attack you emotionally. He will attack your mental health. And there are a lot of people struggling with that part of their lives right now, their mental health. I, I, I heard this week of another pastor, Darren Patrick, who's at Seacoast Church and who, 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 who's, who used to have a, a mega church. But this week he went to a trap shoot with his friend and he, he, he took his own life. That's a pastor dealing with mental health issues. We're complex creatures under the hood. And beneath the service, listen, Jesus has set you free from the penalty of sin, but he has not set you free from the pattern of your sin. And the evil one is a smooth operator who perpetually stalks you with a deliberate plan of attack to take you down. And I've been dealing with that these last couple of weeks, physically and mentally and maritally and emotionally and uh, financially, the, the devil, look, look, I, I know you have screen fatigue. But see, here's what I want you to know. The devil is subtle. He will draw you away from worship however he can do it. 
He will draw you away as a smooth operator, draw you away from God, thwart God's plan in your life, get you off track, get you out of the will of God. And, and here's the thing, he, he is a deceiver, right? 2 Corinthians chapter 11 tells us that. He says in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, but I'm afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure, pure devotion to Christ. Do you see this? He is cunning. He is crafty. He has a super shrewd bag of clever tricks. He uses back doors and missing links and points of weaknesses. He preys on what we think we've already dealt with. He specializes, he specializes in those things that we're in denial about. He does his utmost to conceal and disguise who he is. In fact, he says that later on in this passage. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13. Talking about false teachers, deceitful workmen, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. Not everybody out there teaching the Bible is, is truthful. They're, just, they're, they're often used by the enemy. Then he says this, verse 14. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So, he does not want you to know he exists. I mean, you don't hear on the media any enemy that you're facing, no adversary you're facing, no uh, liar or diabolical presence. And his number one trick is to convince you he's a fantasy. Now, I get it. Some people see Satan behind every bush and everything's a demon. And I'm not saying that we ought to be there. There's extreme preoccupation and fascination with the occult. But I am telling you that don't reduce the devil to a punchline from Saturday Night Live. Because if you can do that, he can fly under the radar, undetected. You need to have your radar on. Now, I'm not saying Satan beeps. Do y'all remember? I don't know if y'all remember this. I remember growing up, and even when I was a, a young man, remember Fuzzbuster radar detectors? I'm sure all of you Christians never had one of those. <laughs> do you know a... Air Force research scientist made that because he got a ticket he didn't think he deserved. And, and you plug it into the zig cigar, cigarette lighter or cigar lighter and, and, and it will tell you when the radar's coming. It's like a modern day today is a Waze. I don't know how many of you know that app, but Waze is, it's, you can even put an English voice on Waze and tell you that the policeman is coming. But let me just tell you this. Satan never advertises by radar that he's a blip on the screen. He's more like Seagraves. And you know what Seagraves is? If you've ever sped through Seagraves, you're going to figure out what Seagraves is. It's a speed trap. And Satan doesn't wear a beeper. He sets up speed traps designed to ensnare us, catch us off guard, trip us up. He is a powerful enemy. And he has a name. He's a real person. He, he has several names. In fact, in Revelation chapter 12, there, verse 7, there, there are several names that talk about who Satan is. And I'm not going to read the whole passage, but it talks about the war in heaven and how Satan and a third of the angels were thrown out of heaven. And, and he was thrown down. And he's called in verse 9, the great dragon, the ancient serpent, the devil, Satan, the deceiver of the whole world, thrown down to the earth. And his angels were thrown down with him. And, and, and he's, he's, he's mad because his time is short. He says at the end of that verse... And he's often insidious, he's often invisible, he stalks you incessantly. Now, here, here, he's a lot like COVID-19. I don't know if you know how really how COVID-19 works, but COVID-19 is a virus of a packet of genetic material surrounded by a spiky protein shell, one thousandth of the width of an eyelash. That's how big the, the virus is. And it looks to attach itself to a human host and hijack its cells to replicate itself in thousands of versions. And once it gets in outside the host, it's dormant. It cannot replicate. It cannot multiply. It cannot reproduce. But when it gets into the host, the protein has a little key and it attaches itself to the other proteins to, and it unlocks and invades unsuspecting cells. It's like a burglar. It's a burglar that moves into your house, uses your furniture, has babies, 10,000 babies, and then leaves the place trashed. That's what the virus does. And the way the virus works, listen to me, the way the virus works is to overwhelm the immune system and at least a 
cytokine storm where immune cells that should be protecting the body begin to attack the body. The very body they're protecting. And and the cells morph into this unruly, torch-bearing mob. Let me tell you something. Satan wants to overwhelm your life. He wants to hijack your thoughts, hijack your emotions, hijack your family. He wants to enter in subtly and subtly and insidiously and get into your life and, and get you to the place that he wants to trash your place. But most of all, he wants you to feel this morning overwhelmed. And I wonder how many of us this morning feel overwhelmed. I know there are times in this season I felt overwhelmed. I've laid my head on the pillow and wonder, what in the world are we going to do? When are we going to have church again? I know some of you are wondering about that. There's not a night that I don't go to sleep thinking about how are we going to make this happen. And, and there's overwhelming thoughts about finances, about unemployment. There are moms who feel overwhelmed. Think about new moms. I saw Madison on here just a moment ago. She's going to have a baby. Think about New moms who are going to have babies and navigating this new reality. Think about moms who are at home trying to navigate through Zoom and spreadsheets at the same time. Think about moms who who are in a nursing home right now with no access to their family. Think about moms with four or five kids under their feet, you know, hiding in in, in the minivan and trying to get away from all of that. Think about men and women who've lost their jobs and are unemployed and trying to find new jobs Uh, And using virtual interviews and and, and trying to work in an industry they never even thought about. Think about those who have too much month and not enough money. That's part of the reason we're offering financial peace. So that when you get in this situation again, you'll be ready. Consider those who are navigating mental health in this season. And and then they go on Twitter or they go on Facebook and they see all of these Uh, people taking sides and corners and then they turn on the news and one news station says this and another news station says this and they want to hunker down and they don't know what to do or where to turn. It is overwhelming. And Satan wants to use this emotionally and physically and mentally in your life to put you down on the canvas and to keep you from serving the Lord Jesus and to keep you from from being fruitful and, and doing what God called you to do. You know who I thought about I was in my quiet time this week, and I thought about Joshua. You remember the story of Joshua? Joshua in Joshua chapter 1. He's taken over for Moses. They've been in the wilderness for 40 years. There they are in the wilderness for 40 years. And in Joshua chapter 1, if you read that passage, three times in that passage, God says to him, Be strong and courageous. Be strong and and courageous. Verse, verse 6, be strong and courageous. Verse 7, be strong and very courageous. Verse 9, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Why do you think he told Joshua, don't be afraid? Why do you think he told him, be strong and courageous? Come on. Don't you think Joshua was overwhelmed? With the task before him. That, that, that after 40 years. He's going to replace. The, the pinnacle of leadership. In that community. Moses. And now he has this overwhelming task. To take the people. Into the land of promise. The promised land. And to conquer all the enemies. And, and he is a daunting task. And, and you would think in the midst of that. Well what do I do in the midst of this. But. Here's what he tells him over and over again in Joshua chapter 1. He says in in, in verse 5, I will not leave you. I will be with you. I'll not forsake you. Uh, In in verse 8, the book of the law won't depart from your mouth. Uh, Meditate it day and night. You will make your way prosperous. You'll have good success. He's saying, I'll be with you. I'll not forsake you. I'll not leave you. I'm great. Listen to me. Don't be overwhelmed. God is greater than your enemy. I love 1 John 4, 4. It says this, little children, you are from God and have overcome these antichrist spirits. He says, for he who is greater in you is greater than he that's in the world. God is greater. God is greater. Whatever you're facing, God's greater than your mortgage. He's greater than your credit 
card bills. He's greater than your finances. He's greater than your credit card debt. He's greater than your broken engagement. He's greater than your loneliness. Greater than your secret sin. Greater than your mental issues. Greater than anything you face. I'm telling you, we serve an overcoming Savior. And no matter your present pressure or your, your constant pain, no matter how big the problem, God is greater. Don't be overwhelmed. Don't be overwhelmed. You are not overtaken. Why? Because 1 John 4, 4 says this. We are overcomers. We're overcomers. And so in the midst of this passage, Peter says you can overcome. We are overcomers. And the question I ask, well, how do you overcome? He tells you, don't do it on your own. God opposes the proud, he says in verse 4, but he gives grace to the humble, 1 Peter chapter 5. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. There are three ways we overcome. One, we take control instead of being controlled. Two, we're vigilant instead of indifferent. And three, we resist him, resist the devil. Don't assist him. Look, look at what he says, 1 Peter 5, 8. Be sober-minded. That means take control. Don't be controlled. Don't let your emotions be the controller of your life. That word, be sober-minded, means be clear-headed. Be well-balanced. Maintain a consistent balance between disposition and thought and action. And, and here's the problem. Listen to me. Many, many people in the spiritual world today have a knowledge of Scripture, uh, a knowledge of the Bible, a knowledge of how church works, but they've separated their spiritual health from emotional issues. And, and look, there are pastors who know the Bible, but at home they're filled with rage. There, there are people who lead a prayer group, but are hypocritical. There are volunteers who are aloof. And, and here's how Satan invades. You, you can read it in Ephesians chapter 4. He takes advantages of the opportunities that you have where he says be angry and sin not and then he says don't let the the devil have a, a foothold you know you know how the satan you ever watch people climb a mountain all they need is a little crevice a, a little output and they'll put their foot on the mountain and they'll use it as a foothold do you know in your life that satan can use your emotions like anger as a foothold and if he gets a foothold if you're not careful and you're not taking control, instead of being controlled, that foothold will become of anger, will become the stronghold of bitterness. And if you're not careful, that foothold that becomes a stronghold will be your downfall. And that unforgiveness will keep you out of the fellowship of the faith. That unforgiveness, that anger and bitterness will ruin your marriage. That unforgiveness and bitterness will ruin your relationships. But you'll say to yourself, I'm justified because that Satan will tell you. He'll feed the fuel in your life. He'll feed that emotional immaturity in your life. He'll say, you're abandoned. You're rejected. You're, you, God has broken his promises to you. And if you don't take control of your thoughts and coach yourself and, and talk to yourself and preach to yourself the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, I'm telling you, what was a toehold can become a stronghold and become your downfall. The second thing he says is be vigilant. Be sober-minded. Be watchful. Don't be indifferent. Don't be indifferent. Be alert to the locations and situations that are aimed to entice you and seduce you, to get you off balance, to interrupt, interrupt your stride, and to move you to participate in things that are contrary to the purposes and plans in the presence of God. Ephesians chapter 6 tells us that we have to do that. I mean, it's, not, it's the same thought pattern, except it talks about putting on the full armor of God. Verse 10, he says, Finally, be strong in the Lord. And the strength of his might. Does that sound like 1 Peter chapter 5? Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And in due season he'll lift you up. Finally be strengthened in the Lord. And the strength of his might. Put on. 
the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. He has a plan. And he's organized. He, he has schemes for your life. He has strategies for your life. Verse 12, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Look, the, prob- the person that Satan is using is not the problem. You don't wrestle against flesh and blood. You wrestle against rulers and authorities, against the cosmic powers over uh, this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Then he says in verse 13, Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in this evil day and having done all to stand firm. And then put on Put on the helmet of salvation. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Put on the belt of truth. Put on the shoes shod with the gospel of peace. Take up the sword of the spirit. Take up the shield of faith that you might extinguish every fiery dart of the enemy. But you've got to stand up and take up the armor of God. Because Satan will scheme against you and he will abuse you and confuse you and misuse you. He will manipulate circumstances and situations against you. He'll attack your health, your wealth, Your family, your livelihood, he'll rob your peace, steal your joy, invade your emotions, agitate your anger and frustration. And we are in a battle against an arrayed force of evil intent. Stand up for our instruction. Here's what he says. Stand up. Stand up and take up. Stand firm. Stand foot. Stand out. Stand strong. Stand when others fall. Stand when others sit. Stand while others sleep. And here's why. Because Satan is real. And he wants you to fall. He hates your guts. Moms, he hates you being a good mom. He hates when you live for Jesus. But but listen to me carefully. The devil cannot do anything to you without God's permission. He can't kick the door down. He'll act like the big bag wolf, but he can't really blow your house down. But you can unlock the back door and prop it open and let him in. But when you're trusting your heavenly father and putting yourself under the mighty hand of God, Satan has to have God's permission to touch you. Do you know that? I mean, look at me. Do you know that? Is that right? Remember one of my favorite passages in Luke chapter 22 when when Jesus says to Simon, Simon, Satan has asked permission to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your strength may not fall. Just know that when you turn back, strengthen the brothers. And Peter said, look, I'm never, I'll go to jail for you. I'll, I'll go to the mat for you. And, and Jesus says, look, don't depend on your own strength. Before this day is over, you're going to deny me three times before the cock crows. And what about Job? What's the story of Job? Satan comes to, to God and he comes after Job. And Job's, God says this, you can do this, but no further. He sets a time, he sets a border, he sets a hedge. Look, you are invincible in the will of God. You are immortal until God wants you home. You have confidence. You have, you, you have security. Come on. Come on, church, listen to me. You have confidence. You have security. Get some Holy Ghost swagger in your strut in a real sense you're more dangerous to yourself than the devil is all, ever ever a danger to you because while he has to ask God's permission to mess with you you don't have to check with anybody to let him into your life and sabotage you how many of you not been vigilant right you're sleeping instead of worshiping You're watching Netflix instead of reading your Bible. You're spending time doing other things instead of praying. And rather than being vigilant and diligent, you're being negligent and you're setting yourself up to allow the enemy to get a toehold and a foothold in your life. I mean, you're letting your kids sleep on Sunday mornings rather than getting them up and watch the service with you. And you're not, you're not challenging them to, to be a part of the Zoom. Look, we're, we're looking for a new youth pastor. But what, what, why, why, what we need is students who are seeking after Jesus. Are they worshiping with you? Are they joining the Zooms? Are they 
trying to be a part of what God's doing in our community. This is not time for them to take a hiatus and a vacation from the Lord. You're just opening them up to the things of Satan when you allow that to happen. Is that oh me or oh my or is that amen? That's the truth of the word of God. We are masters of self-sabotage. So we resist him, don't assist him. And you don't resist Jesus, uh, resist Satan in your own intellect, your own cleverness, your own force of personality. You resist Satan in the work that's already been accomplished by Jesus on the cross of Calvary. It's already done. It's already finished. You're not fighting for victory. You're fighting from victory. Jesus has already won. You don't go out. I'm not telling you to go out and pick a fight with the devil. That's, that would be foolishness. Any of you ever have a bigger brother or bigger sister who took care of you? Look, I was the big brother in my family, and so I, I don't ever understand this, but I, I know of people who had big brothers, and anytime they were picked on, that they would just tell their big brother, and big brother would take care of it. Anybody? Anybody online, you have somebody, a big brother, a big sister, that anytime there was a calamity or casualty, or somebody was picking you on you at school or on the playground, you would tell your bigger brother, and the bigger brother would come take care of them. Here's what I'm telling you. Jesus is your bigger brother. Don't go fight Satan by yourself. You'll lose. But Jesus is your bigger brother because he's already won the war. The battle belongs to the Lord. He's the victor. He's the source. He's the strength. He's the supply. Let, let me tell you a guilty pleasure when I was growing up. Even after I first got married, I used to do this. I, I'd watch World Championship Wrestling. Anybody with me? On TBS. I loved, I mean, I just loved it. I, now, I, I know, I've been all old school. I know who Terry Funk is and Abdullah the Butcher and Rick, Rapid Ricky Romero and the Von Erics, although they wrestled somewhere else. I know who Dusty Rhodes is. I know who Ric Flair is. Woo! And I'd watch it and I'd be mesmerized by the battle, you know, the horsemen, the four horsemen. And, 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 and I'd watch it but you know why I stopped watching? Because I found out, and it took me a while. I'm not the brightest bulb in the pack. It took me a while to find this out. But do you know it's rigged? I mean, they're great athletes. They have amazing capacity as athletes. But the game is rigged. The contest is predetermined. Nancy told me, my wife told me, that she went to a match and saw two of the people who were in a match fighting before the match, go out hand in hand after the match. I said, why didn't you tell me this before I invested all my time? <laughs> and you may think this morning the game is rigged. You may feel like bad things in your life are winning. Temptation has thrown a knockout blow. You may feel this morning it's too late for you. You may think that nothing's going to happen. And I, and I hear people talk this way and feel this way and say, the game is rigged. Politics are rigged. Deep state is rigged. Everything is rigged. I want to tell you something. You better believe it's rigged. It's rigged in your favor. It's rigged because of the person of Jesus Christ. The battle was real, but Jesus died and rose again and delivered the knockout blow to the devil. He won the fight and he's in our corner. He's the undisputed heavyweight champion of the universe. Don't back down. Double down. Don't cower in the corner. Come out swinging firm in your faith. Don't you stand down. Stand up. You're not being rejected. You're being reject, redirected into something new. Jesus didn't lose the fight. And he won't lose you either. Stand firm in your faith. Pray with me if you would. Father, we come in the matchless name of Jesus. In his power, in his presence. Knowing that the enemy is real and the battle that we face is true. And so Lord, we come this morning knowing that as we stand before you, that we stand not in our own power, but we abide 
in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. May we tie our lives to him. May we walk closely with him. May we listen to him. And Father, for those this morning who are going through mental health struggles, that's a difficult situation. And, and Lord, it's, it's not only physical and, and emotional, but it's also spiritual. So I pray for those of you, listen to me, those of you that are facing those issues in your life. It, you need to check on the physical aspects of that with your doctor and the psychological aspects, aspects of that with your counselor. But just know this, there is someone who is here for you spiritually in his name is Jesus. And we're here for you too. I just want you to know if you're not a follower of Jesus and you, you're struggling in that aspect of your life, you can come and put yourself in the corner of the heavyweight champion of the universe. His name is Jesus. And by faith, trust in Jesus. Give your life to Christ. And he will lift you up. I'm not saying your life will be easy. I'm not going to say it's going to change your circumstances. But it will change you in the midst of your circumstances. So why don't you pray to receive Jesus? Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I know I need you. Lord, how I need you this morning. And I'm asking you, forgive me of my sin. It's not too late. You've not do, done too much. You're not too far gone. Jesus specializes in hopeless causes. And if you'll just trust him, put your life in his hand. Your life can change. I believe that with all my heart. That's why I do what I do. So Jesus, come into my life. Make me a new creation in Christ. And if you did that, if you would just text the word 432-223-0505, 432-223-0505, the word Jesus. So we'll know what you did. That, you don't have to confirm that with us. I understand that. But we can help you walk through and give you some materials to make it through that. And I pray this morning for those who are overwhelmed. That they would know that they're not overcome. They're not overtaken. That Jesus, you are our strength and our shield. And Father, I pray that we would be diligent and vigilant. And we would watch and we would pray and we'd be sober minded and we'd resist him standing firm in our faith. And next week we'll look at how that resistance in our presence and in our present will encourage other people who are going through the same struggles. So Lord, as we sing, may we abide in you because you are not rejecting us. You're redirecting us to a better future. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Lord, I come and I confess bowing here I find my rest, and without you, I fall apart, cause you're the one that guides my heart, Lord, I need you, oh, I need you, and every hour I runs deep your grace is more where grace is found is where you are in where you
my song to rise to you. And when temptation comes my way, and when I cannot stand, I'll fall on you. Cause Jesus, you're my hope and stay. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. And every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. My one defense, see your mind. for being here today. Thank you for watching online. Amen. If you're in the room with us, uh, we have a Mother's Day gift for you right outside this door. If you walk out this way, there are some special guests that want to give that to you. If not, come at 2.30 today through our drive through And also, we are going to have Connect Groups back here playing on the screen. I'll get it better. We uh, Last week, I think it might have messed up on y'all. We'll get that fixed. It's going to be good. So stay here for, for a Connect Group with Tanner if you'd like. Uh, but be sure and go get your gift first and then come back and we'll get you fixed up. Amen. Have a good day.